Performance-based dual sport oil change interval. Why is it so short? Are the manufacturers wrong in suggesting this change interval for dual sport riding? Well, let's dig in and see what's going on with this. So I know a lot of people avoid performance-based dual sport bikes because they're scared of the maintenance intervals versus other bikes like KLX 250s and Honda CRF 250Ls, but I think this is a little overrated what the manufacturers are recommending here and I don't think there's a reason to avoid these performance based bikes over these others based on just this. I own a Honda CRF 450L which calls for 600 mile oil changes. I've been doing those up to 2400 miles. I recently found out a way to test my oil at home without sending an off for an oil analysis. Easy way to check and see if the oil's still doing its job. So going to be doing a an experiment on the bike to see yeah how far out the oil can actually go and I believe based on some research I've been doing that these bikes should be able to run just as far out on an oil change as a WR250R or any other bikes so let's look at the research I've been doing on a bunch of different bikes to uh, kind of get an idea of where oil change intervals fall from manufacturers and just how different bikes are built to their specifications. The spreadsheet you're looking at on the screen here is 14 different motorcycles uh, categorized as dual sports to uh, light adventure bikes. Some are air cooled, some are liquid cooled. Uh, they are arranged by oil capacity in quarts, so the DR200 has the least amount of oil at one quart, up to the MT07 uh, T7 at 2.75 quarts. The next column has a recommended oil change interval mileage by the manufacturer, and the next column D has a one quart oil change interval. And the last column is, for me, the 450L oil change interval conversion. The one quart oil change interval is calculated by dividing the recommended oil change mileage by the oil capacity of the bike. So that tells you, in theory, how long one quart of oil should last based on what the manufacturer recommends the oil be changed at. Taking the one quart oil change interval and multiplying it by 1.2 quarts, which is how much oil the 450L holds, that gives me the 450L's oil conversion number. So like the DR200, one quarter oil recommended to be changed every 3,500 miles. So one quarter oil is good for 3,500 miles according to Suzuki for the DR200. So if you have 1.2 quarts of oil, you should, in theory, be able to run that out to 4,200 miles. The one thing I notice about the oil change intervals for all of these 14 bikes is there is no correlation between the oil capacity and the mileage that's recommended to be changed at and, or the size of the engine or the type of cooling, whether it's air-cooled or liquid-cooled. There's just no correlation. There is correlation between mileage and manufacturers, like Suzuki apparently likes to change oil at 3,500 miles and uh, Yamaha on the dual sport bikes likes to stick with 3,000 miles and Kawasaki seems to like uh, 7,500 or 7,600 if you go with the 230 so they like mid sevens and Honda's is kind of all over the place 8,000 on the T50L to 2000 on the 650L to 600 on the 450L. Another thing to note is the uh, KTM 690 Enduro and the MT07 T7 bikes have basically the same size engine around 690 cc's. KTM being a big thumper, MT being a, a uh, twin. But if you notice the 690 holds 1.8 quarts of oil and recommends changing every 6,200 miles where the MT-07 holds uh, 2.75 quarts and recommends changing this oil every 4,000 miles. These engines basically have the same power output and the same displacement, yet have drastically different oil change intervals. A common myth is that 
high performance dual sport bikes like KTM 500s, 350s, Beta 350s, and 450Ls, all those bikes are you know, high strung motors that have super tight clearances and tend to break down the oil much faster than other bikes like the WR250R and, and DRZ400s and bikes like that. The chart you're looking at on the screen here is a comparison of minimum piston to cylinder clearance in microns or millimeters, uh, minimum ring gap for the top ring, the fire ring, uh, ring end gap limits, service limits on that, the bore on uh, the cylinder in millimeters, and the cam lobe height for intake, IN, and then exhaust. So are race bikes built tighter than dual sport bike engines? And the answer is not really. I mean, the specs vary between manufacturer, but there's no race bikes on here. They're just notably tighter. Starting with the tightest clearance is, believe it or not, the WR250R. 10 micron cylinder piston clearance is a minimum cylinder piston clearance allowed. And the other bike that fits that is the YZ450F. Now, how they get their piston to cylinder clearance is so tight on these bikes, I have no idea because that's that's very tight, actually. Uh, coming in next is uh, 20 microns is the air-cooled DR650 along with the CRF450R. Same uh, piston cylinder clearance is there. Next, uh, 30 microns piston to cylinder clearance is the DRZ400. Also sharing 30 uh, microns, uh, YZ250F, KX250F, RMZ250, and RMZ450. And 35 micron clearance is the KLX250 along with the Beta 350 through 430 line of bikes. And 45 microns clearance is the Beta 480 along with the KX450F. Then the KLR650 has 43 microns clearance, which is really close to 45. Are the camshafts really that more aggressive with lift on a race bike versus a dual sport? Not really. Uh, KLX250 and a DRZ400 both have 36 to, well, DRZ is almost 37 millimeters of lift. And heck, if you look at the KLR650, it's 36.3. Basically, it has the same cam lift as the KLX250 does. The Beta 480 and the 350s and 430s, they all have less cam lift than uh, the KLX or the DRZ. They have 33, right at 34 millimeters of uh, lift or for the beta bikes where they, you know, just like the WR250R at 34, where the DRZ and KLX250 have a couple of more millimeters of cam lift over those bikes. So yeah, their bike, their cams are not as aggressive as a KLX250 or DRZ as far as lift and you know, putting pressure on the valve train. The minimum ring gap for the top ring for the DRZ400 and the RMZ450, the minimum ring gap is very tight at 0 .080 millimeters, which is a lot tighter than anything else on this chart. And the next uh, size up is 0.15 minimum ring gap, and that would be your WR250R, your YZ250F, your KX250, and your RMZ250. And then the next one up from that would be 0 .2, 0 0.20, which would be your KLX250, KLR650, and YZ450F. And 0 0.23 is for a KX450, 0 0.25 is for a CRF450R, and 0 0.30 for the DRZ650. I mean, the DR650, so... The minimum ring end gap is just not that different. A lot of bikes share the same. So yeah, there's nothing that just stands out except the DRZ and the RMZ having a really tight uh, minimum ring gap. The ring end gap limit is the 
is a maximum clearance that the rings can have before they're considered worn out. So 0.5 millimeters is the most common across these. Uh, some of the race bikes or race bread bikes, like the Beta actually spec up to a 0.8 and so does the uh, KLR specs 0.7, but most of, most of them fall around 0.5 to 0.6. So there again, the wear specs are uh, basically the same for the uh, rings. So to conclude this video, my analysis of the engine design of dual sport bikes versus the engine design of race bikes is that they're basically the same. There is nothing that stands out on a race bike engine that would cause you to have to change your oil more often than a, a dual sport bike. Other than, you know, some of these race bikes hold like half a quart of oil, but if the bikes hold similar, if the bikes held the same amount of oil, there's nothing that would make, say, a KX450 need an oil change any faster than a WR250R. There's just really nothing in the specs that stands out.